Hi, I'm Serge and welcome to Power Surge. On this channel, I show you everything that I know about Revit. Do you have phased legacy models? Would you like to reuse those in a new template? Well, in this video, I show you how to do that. In this tutorial, I will show you how to update legacy models to a new template. Legacy models are old and outdated, but are also still in use. The model still meets the needs for which it was originally designed for, documentation, but it doesn't allow for development. In the on-screen example, the model contains lots of views, legends and schedules, all of which have been updated in the new template. The schedules are dynamic and the data is carried by the model elements, so it's not such a big deal to remove these. The legacy model also contains detail groups and much, much more. And so we have to strip this model of all non-essential information. The easiest way to do this is to set up a view which displays all of the information that you would like to retain. Ensure that this includes a base point. This will help when locating the model once it has been applied to the new template. Here we can see that the model is phased. In fact, there are four phases in this example. We don't need to worry too much about each phase. However, I do want to retain the existing and the new construction phases. Elements from the key phases need to be grouped. Group 1 will host the demolished elements. Using the phase filters, I can set the view settings to only show old elements that were demolished. Let me also turn on the levels just to show these in context. Levels can also be grouped. To group elements, simply drag the window across any item that you would like to include within your group. Once that is done, use the filter tool to remove any categories that refuse to be grouped. In this case, we remove the project base point because that can't be enclosed within a group. Then from there, select the group icon, give the group a name and proceed. Group 2 will contain all existing elements and also nest group 1 which contained all of the demolished elements. I have a preset phase filter for this called Previous and Demo. That is to show anything from the previous phase. Note, the current view is set to phase 3, the new construction phase. So in this case, the previous phase is phase 2, the existing phase. Because this is a legacy model, you may experience some warnings with regards to these groups. If the warnings aren't too offensive, they can just be handled later on. In this case, we have a couple of columns whose associations have been broken. The warning simply reports that these have been detached, and so it's okay to proceed. To close the group, I need to name it. In this case, I use existing underscore w demo. Once the model groups have been created, we can set up their extraction process. To do this, create a new sheet. Ensure that that new sheet does not have a title block. Renumber and rename the sheet accordingly. Once this is done, place the current 3D view on that newly created sheet and remove the view marker. Now we are ready to clean the file with one click. The key tool here is called Save to New File. With this tool, Revit literally collects all of the visible elements and extracts them to a clean new file. Save the new file to a suitable location and then close the redundant file without saving. Once all that is complete, you can open the file that you have just exported to have a look. 
and check that all is in order. Be sure to click the audit option at the bottom of the menu to ensure that the file is healthy. The new file has combined all phases. Here in the example you can see elements from the previous model's admin phase. It is for this reason that we created those model groups. The purge function reveals that the extraction really did do a serious clean. Only out of the box miners are left. And these exist because Revit has created a new project file. The next step would be to re-establish the phases as per the model groups. A quick demonstration reveals that all items have been placed into one phase, the new construction phase. This is why when creating the model groups initially, we only grouped existing and demolished elements. There was no need to group new construction items because these would be placed in their correct phase by default. Now. The new project file that Revit created through the exporting process doesn't actually contain any template. So what you need to do is to open a new file with your default template and link in the Revit export. Here in the new file I go to the insert tab to link in the exported Revit model. Be sure to locate the model by base point. With the model now located by the base point, we need to align the new template levels to those in the exported and now linked model. To differentiate, go to override graphics in view, click by element or by category and then select half tone. This will allow you to distinguish the levels within the link versus those within the template. Using the align tool, we can align these together. We do this because certain elements in our link will be hosted to these levels. With the levels now in place, we can commence the binding process. In the bind options, only select grids. Remember, we have already associated our levels and so we only need to transfer the grids. Once that is done, Revit will highlight duplicated elements. These are elements that exist both in your linked file and the template. Once that process is complete, Revit may return some warnings. Generally, warnings are okay, but errors are not. In this case, the warnings pertain to the linked file, and Revit is asking that the linked file be removed. This is okay because the bind has now been completed. With the bind process complete, we can start to allocate the model groups to their respective phases. The binding process has enclosed the entire linked export into a model group of its own. We need to ungroup this to proceed. With this now ungrouped, we can simply delete it. We can access the model groups we created at the beginning of this tutorial. The best way to handle this is to select the group in the project browser and then select visible in entire project. Let's start with the existing demo group. This will highlight the model group on screen while also enabling the group modifier tools in the ribbon. On the ribbon, select Edit Group, then select all elements within this group. From there, choose Save Selection from the Save Selection panel on the toolbar. Name the selection accordingly and click Finish. Then find the same group and ungroup it to remove it. Notice this action deletes the group from the project. Then repeat this process for the Demo group. Once the selection sets have been established and the groups have been removed, 
we can load the selection sets back in. This can be done natively in Revit or can be done through the use of an app. In this case, the Diroots One Filter. This is a free app and I highly recommend it. In the app, find the selection sets previously created. Choose Set E. And with this selected, notice the app reports the element information for that selection set. Choose Select to grab the elements in Revit, then Isolate to isolate the elements in Revit. Shown on screen are the selected elements. You can now assign them according to the phasing parameters. Remember, this is the existing selection set, so it needs to be set to the existing phase. Repeat the steps for the other selection set. Set D includes all elements that have been demolished. Set the phasing parameters accordingly. and then hide reset to remove the isolation window. Now check to ensure the model is phased according to the original file. Finally, check that the template views have been correctly associated with the model. All worked well. Demolished items are where they should be and so are the new. I will now show you how to load the selection sets without the app, that is natively in Revit. Once the selection sets have been saved, go to the Manage tab on the ribbon, find the selection panel and choose Load. Select a saved set and click OK. Well, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you found that interesting and learned something new. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.